invite the Holy Spirit to come lead us, teach us, inspire us, help us to understand, O oh Lord. Let the word that is minister to each and every disciple, minister to each of us, Lord. May this word become one in us so that we may step out with the power of your empowerment, Lord. That we may step out to reach the world for you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will lead us, you will teach us, and you will speak to us in the way that we can understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let me... Okay, let me share the presentation. Something not right. Just give me a minute, please. Okay, so as per our notes, we all have downloaded the soft copy of our notes, right? The New Testament survey. So as per our notes, I'll just give you a background of the Gospel of Matthew. So what we see is the last book of our Old Testament was Malachi. So what happened throughout the Old Testament? God has been revealing that there would come a day that the Deliverer will come. The Messiah was promised in the Old Testament. So he was to come from the royal lineage of David. So Jews held King David in high esteem. Since it was under his rulership that the nation of Israel saw the glory. So the vast majority of the Old Testament describes how Israel would reach the heights of those glorious days. But then, very soon, they lost it all. So what happened? Why did they lose it? Because the Israelites started to follow the idolatry. They started disobeying the God of Israel. That caused them to lose their independence. Not just their independence, but then they lost the promised land which God gave them. They ended up being in captivity. And on the other hand, we see that God trying to, you know, uh, trying to promise the Israelites, those who kept the law, those who followed God earnestly. So God sent uh, many prophets to let them know that, you know, God will send a redeemer. God, uh, uh, God promised them, saying that He will restore them back. He will, uh, He will get back that promised land to them. So we see time and again in the Old Testament, the prophets came. They kept reinforcing the promises of God, saying that rep repent and turn back. Uh, you know, uh, you will be restored back. God promised them that. You, there will be a restoration from the captivity. There will be the restoration of the land that God had promised them. So this promise was partially fulfilled when God brought them back from the captive. So uh, though they were back in the promised land, they were experiencing chaotic moments because they were oppressed by the different rulers ending with the Roman Empire which we studied in the first class of the introduction, right? So this period between the Old Testament and the New Testament saw a renewed expectation of the promised Messiah. So the, the Jewish people or the Israelites in those days, they were for sure, it is that this is the season, this is the time period that God will send the promised Messiah. They all were aware of. In fact, the virgins of those days were preparing themselves to have that supernatural conception upon them. So they waited with an expectation. So the Messiah King would come and deliver his people from the hands of the oppressors and destroy all the enemies of God and reestablish 
David's kingdom because that's what that's what the promise was and then he will uh, he will be seated on the throne of God in the Jerusalem and the city would be called as the great king there would be restoration but then nothing of that sort happened because that was not God's plan so in the gospel of Matthew we see that Matthew accounts it shows that Jesus did come but he did not come as the Jewish expected as the Jews expected him to be so he did come and establish the kingdom of heaven but it was not a political kingdom but Matthew reveals Jesus as the king and the kingdom of heaven has been established through Jesus so let's get into the gospel of Matthew so I would request all of us to please turn to gospel of Matthew and let's take turn to read through um, one thing I would like to do is as we study the gospels I would request all of us I'm going to put it across in a story format because when we share it in the uh, story format the learning is great we all tend to remember the stories isn't it stories are much interesting and we get to remember them but I would like to get a commitment from you all that I want each of you all to go through our notes. If you all commit to me that you all will go through the notes because a lot of, his, lot of history facts are mentioned in the notes. So if you all commit to me that you all will go through the notes, then I will put the Gospel of Matthew in a story format to you all and I will follow the same format for the other books. Everyone, I'm looking at the chat for the online students. Wait, let me wait everyone's comment so that we can keep this the whole New Testament series very interesting. Emmanuel, what you say? Nina, John, Jacob. Sure, Karen, thanks for confirming. So I'm going to put it on a story for Matt, okay? A little bit from Chosen series to keep it interesting. Um, and, but I wanted you all to please go through the notes because a lot of history facts are there, which is very important. Okay, and I'll make sure that I'll ask questions from the notes so that you all will go through. Okay, uh, for the e-learning students towards your knowledge check, for online and on-campus students, you will, I mean, the exam papers will be prepared from your notes. Okay, so I wanted you all to go through the notes because it's very important. Okay. Been said that, let's move to our presentation. Just waiting for you all to get the presentation. Everyone can see the presentation. Matthew, the king and his kingdom. Did you all get that? So what do we know about the author of the book of Matthew? What do we know? He's a Jew. He's a tax collector. OK. What else we know about him? What you said was right. He's a Jew, he's a tax collector. Sorry? Yeah, and then be a little loud. Anyone from the anyone from the online students? Y'all can type it on your chat or y'all can unmute and say, what do you know about Matthew? So Matthew has two names. What are the two names? Levi. Okay. Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. So maybe according to our online uh, naming list, Chira, Emmanuel, Francis. So we can take turn to read the scripture according to our online name list. Okay, so first we go with Chira. Chira, can you turn to Matthew chapter 9, verse 9?
Yes, go ahead. Thank you. So what did you read? 9-9, nine, nine, as Jesus passed on, he saw a man named Matthew. What was the name? Matthew. Let's turn to Luke chapter 5, verse 27. Next person, Emmanuel. Can you please turn to Luke chapter 5, verse 27. Emmanuel, you got it? Matthew 5, 20, sorry, Luke chapter 5, verse 27. Okay, if anyone, are, uh, I think you need to unmute, Emmanuel. Your mic is mute. Yeah, now you see. Yeah, Luke 5, 7. And after this thing, he went home and saw a public a publican named Levi sitting at yeah. the receipt of custom. Thanks. From these through from these two scriptures, that is Matthew 9, 9 and Luke chapter 5, verse 27, we get to know that Matthew had two names. One is Matthew and the other was Levi or Levite. Okay, uh, Levi. So here we see, and we also see that in the Gospel of Mark chapter 2, 14. Please make a note. Gospel of Mark chapter 2, verse 14. He was known as a Jew and the son of Alpheus. He was known as a Jew and a son of Alpheus. And in the Gospel of uh, sorry, Gospel of Matthew, chapter nine, verse nine, we just studied. Through that verse, we also know that he was a tax collector by occupation. Okay, and he worked for the Roman government, so he collected tax. So all the tax collectors seem to be. They need to be illiterate. They need to be educated. And also they need to be bilingual. They need to know many languages to communicate with the Jewish, Romans, and the others. And they also should be Roman sympathizers. They need to be alongside of the Roman government. And we also see the tax collectors were the ones who had to keep a detailed record. So. Undoubtedly, we see that Matthew, and even in the Gospel of Matthew, because he had this experience of his work, uh, he was well educated and he kept detailed, uh, uh, he maintained a detailed record of these tax and revenues. We see in the Gospel of Matthew also, he, try, he tends to record things in detail format. We also see as a tax collector, Usually, the tax collectors are very rich in nature. Okay, he seemed to be a rich man, and tax collectors were considered to be a spies by the people, and they were hated by the Jewish. Okay, if you see um, uh, in the movie Chosen, you see his own parents hated him. They said we are ready uh, to, you know, uh, they have their own custom, you know, of uh, having bath and saying that I don't have a son. We don't have a son. They hate him to the core. And the people, if, you know, if you see a tax collector coming in the opposite direction, people hate to face him. They abuse him verbally. Sometimes, you know, um, 
yeah they hate the uh, the the very sight of him they hated they were not even allowed uh, the tax collectors were not even allowed to enter the temple and the priest would not even pray for them though they were jewish but still you know they were completely excommunicated from the community and we see the tax tax collectors or the publicans were considered lower than the thieves or the prostitutes in those days so how do we know that we see in the uh, gospel of matthew chapter 21 can i request you all to please turn to gospel of matthew chapter 21 verse 28 to 32 anyone who have taken can unmute and read Twenty-eight to thirty-two. But what do you think, a man? Has, what do you think, a man? Has, a man had two sons, and he came to the first and says. Son, go Son, work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said to him, The first. Jesus said to them, Surely I say to you that tax collectors and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe him. What we see here is a different view of how Jesus looked at the harlot and the tax collectors. Okay, Jesus said that, Assuredly, I say to you that the tax collectors and the harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. So he had a very different view of tax collectors and the harlots. Another point we see that the tax collectors were known to have been killed by the zealots. You know who are zealots, right? There was a set of people, Jewish people. Uh, who actually revolted against the Roman government. They actually planned to destroy the Roman government and anyone who supported the Roman government. So we see the tax collectors were in favor of the Roman government. They went against the Jews in collecting the tax and they pressurized them. Uh, so zealots hated the tax collectors. And you see many tax collectors were killed by the zealots, especially in the time of the tax revolt. We also see that, um, you know, there was uh, one disciple who was very significant. Who is that? Who was a zealot, Simon the Zealot. OK, so Matthew seemed to have, uh, have had an obsession with money because he was actually day to day, he was collecting and he was handling money. And it is interesting that. This is the only gospel that records Jesus making the payment of the temple tax from the coin in the fish's mouth. We see in the chapter 17 about that. And it is equally interesting that he is uh, the only one to record the Matthew is the only one to record the bribing of the Roman guard uh, to say that the disciples had stolen the body of Jesus. So he would have been very familiar with the Roman corruption, the Roman soldiers' corruption in those days, so that he is able to record it in the Gospel of Matthew that you know um, they came up saying that the disciples would have bribed and stolen the body of Jesus. With that being said, when did Jesus call Matthew? When did Jesus call Matthew? This is the Matthew from the Chosen series, if you all have watched. Very interesting, isn't it? Uh, the Chosen series depict Matthew completely in a very different role. We're not too sure whether Matthew was like that with few spectrum with him, but then in a very interesting way they have captured so that you know the movie can be favored a uh, different set of people okay so 
this is the Matthew from the chosen series. But the point here that we would like to say, ask is, when did Jesus call Matthew? OK, the time is running. We need to cover the whole Gospel of Matthew. If we can catch up with the speed, we all can cover the Gospel of Matthew in one class. So when did Jesus call Matthew? OK, from his office when he was collecting tax. OK, that seemed to be right. So he was called by Jesus when he was sitting in the receipt office. He was collecting tax. So what did Jesus call him? What did Jesus say? Let's turn to Mark chapter 2, verse 14. Mark chapter 2, verse 14. Can one of you all please unmute and read? Karen, OK, go ahead, guys. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Pharaoh, sitting in the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. OK, so we see that uh, in Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verse 14, he says, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. Just two words. Jesus just said, follow me. And Matthew follows Jesus. What made Matthew to follow Jesus? What do you think? What made Matthew to follow Jesus? He was hated by the Jews. He was looked down by people. He was abused verbally and physically by the people. What made Matthew to follow Jesus? You know, it was not easy to follow Jesus. He needed to do a lot of sacrifice. But what made him to follow Jesus? And I'm sure Jesus would have been watching Matthew in the tax office many times, many times. Matthew, being a keen observer, even he would have observed Jesus, isn't it? He would have observed Jesus. What is this man trying to preach and teach the Jews? Matthew, being a Jew, even he knew that the Messiah would come in this time. So even he would have had a question, is this the Messiah that the Old Testament prophets have been talking about? So even he would have keenly tried to keenly observe Jesus. So he would have watched how Jesus, because he has recorded that Jesus paying the temple tax through the coin from the fish's mouth. So he would have been an eyewitness, maybe, but it's not saying, but because he recorded Maybe you would have witnessed that Jesus getting a coin from the fish's mouth, and you would have wondered how did he get that coin from the fish's mouth. Many instances, you would have seen Jesus healing the blind, healing the dumb, deaf. You would have seen many miracles of the teaching, teaching of the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, because that's what Matthew records more on the kingdom of heaven. So you would have heard Jesus' teaching. So all these would have convicted Matthew personally within him. So the minute Jesus called him, maybe he felt, maybe because he's been hated by the Jews all around, maybe he felt that he's not worthy enough to follow Jesus. Maybe he felt that Jesus may not choose him to be one of the followers. Maybe with all that longing to know more, to be with Jesus and to hear more of his words, but then he was logged within that office. But God does not look a man outward. He look at the man inward. The art attitude matters. So Jesus being the God who knew Matthew's intention, who knew Matthew's heart, uh, earnest thirst from his heart, as he passed, when the time came, when the time was ripe for him to be called, when Jesus was passing towards his office, Jesus 
just looked at Matthew eye to eye. Eye to eye. The gaze was locked. The minute Jesus said, follow me, Matthew was just waiting for that time. He never even had a second thought, what would Jewish people think of me? Can Am I worthy? Will the Roman Empire allow me? What will happen uh, if I leave this office? Who will be the next tax collector? Who will take over? He had no second thought. He had no second thought. The minute Jesus said, follow me, he just left his office, left everything that he had. The money, the authority, the power that he carried with him. He left everything because that did not matter Matthew. In fact, when you see, look back at the history, Matthew's parents had prayed and dedicated him when he was a child to be a Levite. That's why they named him Levi, to God. But then as he grew, he was educated and he eventually landed up being a, a you know a influencer to the Roman people, being a tax collector, and he was hated by the Jews and by his own parents. But then the call, the dedication upon him never failed when the right time came. Jesus called him. If you look at each of us, if you look at each of our background, don't we have the same experience what Matthew had? Even we maybe have gone astray just like Matthew. Even we would have had our own background. But that minute, when the time came right, just like how Jesus called Matthew saying, follow me, the same word came to each of us. The same call came to each of us. Just like how Matthew received that call. He embraced that call. No matter what, he had no second thought, what will happen next? He just followed Jesus, trusting him, believing his future to be secured in God's hand. I think same call, same experience each of us have as we embraced that call of God in our life. Each of us have a testimony to share. When I ask you all to unmute and share, I'm sure each of you all have that experience, have that call from God. If not, we wouldn't have been here where we are today. Just like Matthew behind that tax office, each of us had our own experience, own background that we were behind, wearing different masks, hiding ourselves behind it. But then the minute the call came to us, we don't need any mask. We don't need that. We don't have to be a, a, a hypocrite or we don't have to have that pretense in front of people. We are who we are. We embrace that our identity is in Christ. We accept all our fault. We accept our sin. In fact, we announce it to everyone saying that this was my background. This is how who I was, and now I am this. This is my new identity in Christ, which is forever. No one can change it. No one can steal it. Just like how Matthew had the boldness, the courage to come out of his office and be one with Jesus. He became the follower. All that he learned from his office started being useful in the kingdom of God. He started, he started recording the acts of Jesus. He lived with Jesus. He was the eyewitness of every miracle that he did. He started following him and he started recording. So this is how Matthew was with Jesus. Okay, I don't think we can complete this session in one hour, okay? So yeah, his conversion to Christianity seems to have been uh, a very significant event because it has been recorded in all three synoptic gospel that is in Matthew, Mark and Luke and after his conversion he became very evangelistic okay even if you see uh, in the gospel of Matthew the last chapter uh, we see that uh, you know he invites he gives a great commission he notes that great commission carry the gospel to the ends of the earth okay not only that the minute he he um, he started following Jesus. Minute he, he took the invite of Jesus, started to follow him. The first act that he does is he invites his other tax collector friends, meets with Jesus over a dinner at his place. 
I didn't get the right image to put it up there. But then he hosted dinner party along with the other tax collectors with Jesus. So that the experience that he has got with Jesus, even the other tax collectors can have with Jesus. So this is what happens. Even when we encounter Jesus as a Lord and Savior in our life, you see, the very next thing that we tend to do is we tend to invite our circle of friends to this Jesus who is a Redeemer to us. Isn't it? Any of you all have this experience that you all did. The minute you encountered Jesus, you invited your friend circle to experience this Jesus who delivered you, who redeemed you. Anyone just give a thumbs up. Thumbs up on online so all of us would know. Keep it interactive, guys. <laughs> so that we know that all of us are following, all of us are in that groove of trying to learn about Matthew. So the book of Matthew was written in 50 to 69 AD. Again, we need to remember these dates are approximate. The use of the phrase until this day in the Gospel of Matthew uh, records, uh, I mean, uh, is wrote sometime after the event that has been recorded or occurred. We see in Matthew 27, uh, chapter 27, verse 8, it says that, therefore, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. That means it has been recorded after the events have been taken place. Okay, So it was most likely, um, the Gospel of Matthew has been most likely written before the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem in 70 AD. Because the references throughout the Gospel, we see that uh, Matthew has been referring to the city of Jerusalem as the great city, the great king, the temple, or impending trouble. So he never talks about the temple being destroyed. So that means this book, the Gospel of Matthew has been written before AD 70, before the temple destruction. To whom was this Gospel of Matthew written? Or the book of Matthew was written to? To whom? Yes, it was written to the Jews. It is believed that his intention, the intended audience, was the Jewish people for a couple of reasons. Why do you think it was written to the Jews? OK, two reasons. One, it is clear that it was written to the Jewish people, to this set of people who were very familiar with the prophecies of the Old Testament. Because in the Gospel of Matthew, we see that 60 Old Testament references been made in just 28 chapters. 60 Old Testament scriptures have been referred to in 28 chapters. You'll get this for your exam, OK? So it is also clear that he was writing to the people who had an expectation of the coming of Messiah. So who was expecting for the coming of Messiah? It was Jewish people. So these are the two reasons. Okay, One was the Old Testament re references, about 60 were referred in 28 chapters and then Jewish people were had this expectation of expecting the coming Messiah because of the uh, because of the prophecy, you know, in the in the book of Daniel where he mentions about the seventy weeks prophecy. There was a great expectancy among the Jewish people having the Messiah come during this time period. Okay, with that we will move on to the purpose of writing this book. What was the purpose of writing? The Gospel of Matthew. Sorry? Yes, very important. Thanks, Prince. For the Jews to know that Jesus was the Messiah, and second, that he is from the lineage of King David. Very important. So we see that the purpose of the Gospel of Matthew to be validated by certain fact, to know that Jesus is the Messiah and the Jews were waiting for. So the first is he demonstrated that Jesus 
was the correct bloodline and he qualifies the lineage from Abraham to King David through Joseph. Okay. Now, the second point we see that in the Gospel of Matthew, he proves that Jesus' life was a succession of one fulfilled prophecy, prophecy from the Old Testament. All the prophecies of Jesus has been fulfilled in Jesus. So that's why he makes that 60 verse reference from the Old Testament. Okay, and the third we see that he shows that coming Messiah has come to reign not the political kingdom but the spiritual kingdom. That's why he talks about the kingdom of heaven more in the Gospel of Matthew. Okay, with that, we will move on to the comparison. Gospel of Matthew or the writer Matthew does certain comparison. I'll just project it. Yeah, he does a comparison in the Gospel of Matthew. Whereas with the other synoptic, uh, other gospels, okay, synoptic gospels. Well, Matthew records the kingdom as a kingdom of heaven, and the others, like Mark and Luke, says kingdom of God. If you see in Matthew four seventeen, I've just sure uh, presented that on your screen. Matthew four seventeen says the kingdom of heaven is at hand whereas the other gospel like mark luke you see they portray the gospel of the kingdom of god many many places many scripture reference i have pasted here i posted here which talks about in the gospel of matthew matthew records saying to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven to them know the uh, of such is the kingdom of heaven uh, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven Preach saying the kingdom of heaven. See, these are the references that Matthew uses in the gospel of Matthew. But whereas Luke and Mark, they refer it as yours is the kingdom of God. To preach the kingdom of God. He that is least in the kingdom of God. So they refer the kingdom as the kingdom of God. And Matthew refers the kingdom as the kingdom of heaven. Okay. So through that we see all the uh, uh, the Old Testament prophecies has been fulfilled through Jesus, and he clearly portrays that in the Gospel of Matthew. So what are the things that mark that this book as the book of the kings, book of king? So there are several elements in the Gospel of Matthew that classifies the book of king, that is the Old Testament prophets who declare that the Messiah would indeed come as a king. And that's why we see that Matthew portrays Jesus as king and, and Jesus, the kingdom that he is establishing, he portrays that as the kingdom of heaven. Okay, We see that in Isaiah. Can we turn to the Book of Isaiah, chapter 9. Anyone who has turned can read verse 6 and 7. Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. Can one of you all please read? A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. Have you? Yeah. yeah, Vijay, go ahead, please. A son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with just, justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this.
you guys. Okay, like, sorry, I muted. So we see that how Matthew portrays Jesus as the king through other scriptures as well, not only through Isaiah chapter 9, um, verse 6 and 7, but also Jeremiah 23, verse 5 and 6, and Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. We see that how the prophets portray Jesus, the coming Messiah, as the king. We also see certain facts that describes Jesus as the king. So we also see certain facts that describes Jesus, uh, the declare that Messiah would indeed come as a king. One uh, we read from the book of Isaiah, and next we see Jesus kingly genealogy in the gospel of matthew chapter 1 verse 1 to 17 we see the genealogy of jesus the book of the genealogy of jesus the very first verse matthew chapter 1 verse 1 can we turn to matthew chapter 1 verse 1 so we see that the scripture says the book of the genealogy of jesus christ the son of david the son of abraham so Jesus is immediately linked to the kingly line through David, even though we know that Joseph was his earthly father, uh, was not uh, Jesus' earthly father. If he were to sit on David's throne, his earthly lineage would have to go back to David. The second point we also see as Jesus' kingly visit in Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 12. When we read, because of time frame, we are not reading it. But I request you all either to take a screenshot of what is seen on your uh, screen or you all can make a note so that you all can read the scriptures to know more about it. So we see that the baby Jesus is visited by the three king, kingly figures from the east, right? It's not three kings. They were, uh, the scripture says uh, the wise men visited Jesus with three gifts, okay? Not only to do these kings, pay homage to Jesus, okay? But they presented him with three kingly gifts. What are the three gifts that was presented to Jesus? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And all these three have certain significance, isn't it? What is it? Do you all know that? What are the three significance? Okay, make a note. We'll check in the next class, okay? You'll need to let us know what are the three significance of these three gifts? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Okay, there is a significance of why these three gifts were presented to baby Jesus. Okay, why? So Matthew is the only gospel that records this kingly event. Okay, we need to keep in mind. Now, the third point here, we see that Jesus kingly title. In the gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. What we see that? We see that. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, one second. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judah, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. So these wise men have studied the stars. Everything has a significance. So that particular star that appeared in the sky denotes that the king has been born. And that's why these wise men who looked up to the star knew that there's something significant has happened and they followed that star and they've come. Okay, the uh, fourth point we see is Jesus' kingly function. Matthew 2, 6. Jesus kingly function. What does it say? But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the ruler of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, who will shepherd my, my people, Israel. You see, kingly function. So next, let me change the slide. What is it? Jesus kingly forerunner. Who was the forerunner for Jesus? John the Baptist. So Matthew 3, verse 1 to 3. 
because of time i will read maybe next class you know we all can take the scriptures and keep it ready so in those days john the baptist came preaching in the wilderness of judah saying repent for the kingdom of god is at hand for this is he who was spoken by the prophet isaiah saying what did he say the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the lord make his path straight so there was one person coming crying so why did god allow john the baptist to come before jesus why can't jesus just come introduce himself why do you think to prepare the way yes why should john the baptist come to prepare the way because of the prophecy okay the silence period okay yes so all what you said is right so when you look at the background or the history of those time when we study the culture of the jewish according to their custom when a king traveled through his domain that a crier should go before him a crier should go before him so according to their custom god may allow this to happen so god sent forth john the baptist who would cry before him to prepare a way so that the people would know that a king is going to come that jesus the messiah would be coming so that they will also be prepared to pay him that homage to pay him the due respect that he deserved okay i know times up we have few more points to cover maybe we can take it up in the next class okay because there's lots more to cover even after this so we can continue to study the gospel of matthew in the next class and maybe once we finish that we will move on to the gospel of mark as well okay so with that we'll end this session uh, can i request one of you all to please end the session with a word of prayer and we can study further is it interesting please let me know so in the meanwhile please watch chosen i'm not advertising i'm just saying so that for a better understanding watch season 1 season 2 if you have not watched it so that we will have a certain understanding and as we go through the scripture we can understand it much better okay let's have a word of prayer we'll pray shiv kumar can you please unmute and pray Karen, would you like to pray? Can I pray? Can can I pray? Okay, Nina, would you like to pray? What happened? I'm muted. Okay, Nina, would you like to pray? Yeah, you can unmute. Father God, we thank you. We bless you for this day, Lord. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this time. We spend in the book of Matthew, Lord. Father, we submit everything of us unto your love. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in today's session. See you all next week, continuation of the Gospel of Matthew. Thank you so much. God bless.